this hour with a rather start story from Katsuna State where the police earlier today confirmed the kidnap of five female students of Federal University Tutsima by unknown gunmen. According to the police public relations officer in the state, Abu Bakr Aliyu, he said the terrorists invaded residents of the students behind Marimo Ajiri Memorial School in Dutsima around 2 a.m. on Wednesday. He said that the police have arrested one person suspected to be supplying information to the terrorist who abducted the students. The spokesperson also said that the police have intensified efforts to rescue the victims unhurt. According to a report, both male and female students of the Federal University are leaving off campus due to insecurity in the area. In the meantime, the House of Representatives is urging the nation's security chiefs to redouble efforts in securing the safe rescue of seven kidnapped prospective core members in Zimfara State. The legislators also called for an end to alleged unlawful road blockage, extortion and harassment by security agents along the lagos agbara badagri Seme Highway. National Assembly correspondent Jake Adisa has details. Over the last seven weeks, seven National Youth Corps members have been in the den of gunmen after they were abducted in Zamfara on their way to Sokoto State. Since then, the House of Representatives has been on the case. Its Committee on Youth recently interfaced with the management team of the LYSC and it's got assurances that the abducted victims will soon be freed. <laughs> Ten members led by Akwaibom legislator Eyima Idem present a motion urging the nation's security to agents to redouble efforts second. on the matter. Targeted at innocent core members has raised significant security concern, threatening the lives of young citizens, eroded public trust and confidence in the government's ability to protect its citizens and pose the potential to mar the core objective of the National Youth um, Service Corps. The alleged unlawful roadblock, extortion and harassment by security agents on the ever-busy Lagos Agbara Badagri Seme Highway catches the lawmakers' attention. A motion by Winga Shesi from Badagri calls on customs to beef up security on the road. To urge Nigerian Customs Service to enhance security on the Lagos Agbara Badagri Seme Highway and ensure strict implementation of laws, circulars, and guidelines for mounting checkpoints. They terrorize the people. You find the police there. You find the military there. You find the customs there. You find the immigration there. You find the civil defense corps there. Two matters of urgent national importance dealing with the spread of insecurity in the Northwest and the need to create an enabling environment for peasant farmers to harvest their crops also received massive support. The government should establish a special tax force dedicated to addressing the security challenges in the Chiwok Dambua constituency with a mandate to protect the lives and property of farmers. The past three months, there has been a significant rise in voluntary activities within Zampara, Sokoto, Kebi, Katsina, and Kaduna states. The House adopted a motion on the need to rehabilitate the 6.4 kilometer Kirikiri Federal Road in a Jeromi Feludu area of Lagos State to enhance the movement of persons, goods, and services. Joke Yatsa, TVC News, Abuja. Let's take you now to Plateau State, where the commander of Operation Safe Haven, Major General Abdul Salam Abubakar, has again met with critical stakeholders to find lasting solutions to the crisis in Mangu local government area of the state. The latest engagement was necessitated by the recent killing of a Fulani paramount ruler in Panyam district. Correspondent Funam Joshua reports. A cross seminar of critical stakeholders from the Mogavul and the Fulani communities of the Mangu local government area of Plato State. They are here at the headquarters of the third division of the Nigerian Army Rukuba Cantonment Joss on the invitation of the general officer commanding the division to discuss further ways to put an end to the persistent attacks and killings witnessed in the area in recent times. Lives and property have been lost between April of this year and death in the council area, and the efforts to tackle the challenge are still yet to record positive results. The commander of Operation Safe Heaven challenged all stakeholders to take seriously the act of not breaking the law with their own hands. 
He gave an update on the missing Fulani traditional ruler of Panyam and what they are doing with the development. Now we have made a total of 12 arrests in the last couple of weeks. Consequent upon the directive of the Chief of Army Staff that we must immediately bring the perpetrators. And out of those 12 that have been arrested, we have released nine, leaving only three key actors. There are a few bad eggs amongst us who should reflect it as so. The floor was then open for the participants to discuss and deliberate on their differences and the way forward. It's not one of us I'm still the leader in After much deliberation by the representatives of the warring communities, the GOC then made his final remarks on the subject matter. Save the world under my command is just unfair. We don't care which side of the divide come from. What is paramount is the protection of life and property. We chatted with some of the participants about their takeaways from the meeting. We are able to resolve this and that and we continue understanding our differences and we see how to manage our differences. So it is timely. We really appreciate the GOC and what he has done. And I want to appreciate the initiative, uh, initiative of the GOC. So I think we have understood ourselves by and large. And I pray that this initiative will, will be sustained. At the end of this critical stakeholders meeting, the Commander of Operation Safe Haven, Major General Abdul Salam, tax all the participants to take every issue discussed here to heart, as well as do their best in implementing it. Funom Joshua, TVC News, Rukuba Cantonment. Let's take you to Ondo State, where the House of Assembly has issued a fresh directive to the state's chief judge, Olushego Dushala, to immediately set up a seven-man panel to investigate the deputy governor on allegations leveled against him. This follows the deputy governor that's located to as failure to respond to the notice of allegation of gross misconduct leveled against him. Speaker of the Assembly, Olamide Oladiji, who gave this directive during plenary on Tuesday, said the Constitution stipulates that the Assembly should wait for seven days for the Deputy Governor to respond, which has now lapsed. A Court of Appeal sitting in Abuja had restrained the State House of Assembly from carrying out the impeachment process against the Deputy Governor. All the way from that, now in Nogun State, Governor Peter Mba has reaffirmed his administration's commitment to provide enabling environment for investment in the state. He restated this commitment when he received, received the chief executive officer of a commercial bank who came to inform him of the annual opening in the state. He said the state is making progress in de-risking investment and making its ease of doing business more attractive. The governor highlighted the state's abundant investment opportunities in agriculture and agro-industry, logistics and aviation, tourism, real estate, mineral resources and information and communication technology. The team, led, the team lead acknowledged that the organization studied the governor's vision, pledged to key in his vision to develop a Nugu of their dream public sector economy to a private sector driven economy and this is for us moving forward in that uh, regard having the private sector coming to set up here in the United States. Private sector is not uh, Father Christmas, they are not philanthropists, they, are, they come to a location because they know there will be returns on uh, investment. And so for us, it's for us to do everything we can to ensure that uh, we de-risk whatever it is that would stop you from making that uh, returns on investment. Any goal that I've seen, as peaceful as it can be. Um, I've been familiar with Enugu before now, and it's not been more peaceful than it is today. Um, on this, I think on Monday, about... The month and a half ago, I was here on a Monday, and life was normal. So I don't think that um, there's any fear of insecurity right now in the state. So for those who are serious, who want to do business, in the is a place to come. Watching TVC 